ES class. Uh, good evening. Am I audible to all of you? Austin Humam Tarif. Yes. All right. Uh, so see, in the last class, we had stopped at electric flux right on Wednesday's class which we had so electric flux was the last topic which we covered so uh, what was electric flux electric flux was simply number of electric field lines which are crossing an a, a unit area perpendicularly that's it that is what is meant by electric flux we didn't jump to gauss theorem in any your assessment also one question came from gauss theorem as well so do not worry about it gauss theorem we are going to discuss it to study electric flux so in electric flux you have to take the perpendicular to the surface what do we call that perpendicular to the surface If you drop a perpendicular to the surface, what do we call it? Area vector. Remember, we drop a perpendicular to the surface, we call it area vector. And the angle between area vector and electric field is considered between when we are calculating electric flux. Right? So if you have revised it or not, I hope you have revised. Any doubts from the previous classes? Clear? Yes? No? What? Yeah. All right. So, formula for electric flux is E dot S. That is E S cos theta, where E is electric field, S is the surface area, whatever is your surface area, be it a circle, sphere, square, cube, anything. And cos theta is the angle between electric field and area vector. We saw a question also where the angle between uh, electric electric field and the plane was given 60 degree. So we didn't choose it. We have to choose. We subtracted 90 degree and use this angle. Uh, one or two questions let us see from this part also before moving on to Gauss theorem. Two questions at least. So this question says what? Electric field E is equal to I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap exists in space. You have to calculate flux through area. S is equal to I cap minus J cap plus K. Now see all of, all of you who do not have their concepts well built in uh, dot product. So here the, it would be a revision also of dot product. Just pay attention. It is very easy to see. See electric field is given. E is what is value of electric field given. E is given as I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap. And what is the surface area given? This is given as I cap minus J cap plus K cap. Right? So when we are asked to calculate electric flux, what is the first thing that we do? Put in the formula. That's it. How you put in the formula for it? For the formula, it's just E dot S. So it means you are given two vectors in Cartesian form in the form of I cap, J cap, K cap. And you have to tell the answers. That is, you have to take the dot product of these. How to take the dot product? Just pay attention to this. All the questions based on dot product will be cleared. See, flux is E dot S. E is, E means I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap dot. S means I cap minus J cap plus K cap. Now, always remember, whenever we do I dot I, that gives us one. So, it means I cap dot I cap will also be one. J cap dot J cap will also be one. K cap dot K cap will also be one. Fine. Just remember this. Whenever you have I cap dot I cap or J cap dot J cap or K cap dot K cap in anywhere, this equals to one. So it means if I have I cap dot I cap anywhere, this will give me one. So what is left now? There, 
coefficients like 2j cap is there so j cap dot j cap will be one but what what about this two so best method is whenever you are having dot product a dot in between just do one thing take the coefficients multiply and put the operations as in what is the coefficient of i here one so take one multiplied by what is the coefficient of i into one that's it next plus so this is one fine this is for i cap you have solved now what about j cap yes tarif what is the coefficient of j cap here um is uh, one into two this is just two coefficient two. apart from j cap no whatever is left that you have to see whenever i say coefficient of i cap so whatever is left like here nothing was there apart from i it means one was there that's why no one into i cap was i cap here two into j cap is two j cap so coefficient is two and what is the coefficient of j cap here austin minus one minus one right so this is two into minus one next what is the coefficient of k cap here we have three multiplied by coefficient of k cap is one that's it so you have one into one is one two into minus one is minus two and three into one is three so that gives two newton per coulomb meter square as the electric flux that's it this is the value of electric flux fine electric field is given surface area is given take the coefficients of the like terms multiply i caps both the coefficients of i caps together multiply both the coefficients of j cap together and then k cap together and then whatever is the math mathematical operation you are getting plus minus just added or subtracted that's it just note it down one more type of question can come that can be confusing if it comes to you directly so note it down that one last question we'll do before jumping on to gauss theorem written class till here if anyone is writing stop me otherwise i think we should move forward yeah, uh, one minute okay okay just note it down note it down. yeah dandy all right so yes this question c class it's a very simple question if you read it in one go but if you actually go by the lines no it becomes confusing regarding surface area see the question says that electric field is given i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap 
this is the electric field which is given. Calculate flux through area of 5 meter square in XY plane. How would you take the dot product now? What did we just study? We had studied, we have just studied that I cap, I cap, their coefficients will get multiplied, J with J here. Here, 5 meter square is having no coefficient. It means no Cartesian form is given no, for 5. Is Whether it's 5 I cap, 5 J cap, 5 K cap, nothing is mentioned. So if this type of question is given, you have to check the plane. In which plane is 5 meter square given? 5 meter square is given in XY plane. So for XY plane, what would be the area vector that we'll be using? Because obviously we know that we only calculate the area vector, right? Without the area vector, we do not perform calculations. So if 5 meter square, I cap, J cap, K cap, and all these are not mentioned, we'll find it all by, by ourselves. See, if I tell you, if I tell you uh, XY, XY plane, this is XY plane, right? This is XY plane. So this axis is Y and this axis is X. This is how we write XY axis. This is the XY plane between Y axis and X axis. Between Y axis and X axis, this is the XY plane. If I tell you Y, Z plane, so Z will be the third axis over here. This will be Y, Z plane. Y axis and Z axis coming out of the plane. Y axis, Z axis. So this entire will now will be Y, Z plane. Look here. X axis and Z axis. X axis was always like this whenever it was with Y also. So here X axis is this. This that is coming out is y axis, a uh, z axis. So this becomes this plane becomes what? This is x z plane. Understood? Y axis, this is x axis, so x y plane. Y axis and z axis, so y z plane. This plane becomes y z plane. Anything is present here that becomes in under y z plane. This becomes X, Z plane, like this. So tell me class, if X, Y plane is given to you, which plane it would be? This plane only between Y and X, this would be X, Y plane, right? So if this is X, Y plane, just tell me perpendicular to X, Y plane will be which axis? Any one of you. If this is Y, X perpendicular to it, Three axes are there. Z axis. Very good. Option. See class, others also. Mam Tarif, listen. If this is Y, X, so C, C. This is how we draw the graph. No. This is Y axis. This is X axis. This is Z axis. So what is the plane that is given to us right now. This is the plane, x, y plane. So perpendicular to this is this only, z axis. And which unit vector do we have for z axis? We write it as k cap. i cap is for j, I x axis, j cap is for y axis, and for z axis we have k cap. Let's say, let's say suppose in the question, the modification was uh, 5 meter square in XZ plane. So XZ plane means this plane. This is XZ plane, right? So if XZ plane is given perpendicular to it would be Y axis. XZ perpendicular would be Y axis. So you would be using J cap. If it is YZ plane given, so perpendicular to this plane would be X axis. You'll be using I cap. Since X and Y are given to you, what you will be using? You will be using Z axis, that is K cap. So electric field will be I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap. And surface area will be 5K cap. 
now it's clear now see when you have to take the dot product i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap for electric field e dot ds we write dot s is 5k cap now see coefficients of i and j they are already zero here there aren't any coefficients of y uh, of i cap and j cap so i 1 into 0 will be 0 this 2 into 0 will be 0 so there is isn't significance of writing but we do have coefficients of k cap what are they from here we have 3 from here we have 5 that makes it 15 so this is 15 volt meter or you can use newton coulomb newton per coulomb meter square i think it's better since you all do not know this so this is, will be 15 newton per coulomb meter square so calculation part was easy there is a, there wasn't anything in calculation part it's just that this portion that how to just make the unit vector that was difficult one thing before we begin the next question okay just note it down one note point i'll tell you first note it down Yes, see, Tari. In this question, no, E dot DS, we have to calculate electric flux. That must be clear to you. I have surface integrality. Right. For surface area, you do not have whether it's 5 I cap, 5 J cap, 5 K cap, whatever is the coefficient. So, whichever plane is given, no, X, Y is given, whichever axis is left that unit vector use see always remember for positive x-axis it's plus i cap for axis positive j cap for negative y axis minus j cap 
for positive z axis it's k cap negative z axis minus k cap so here x and y plane if i drop a perpendicular to this that will go into z axis and what is the unit vector for z axis k cap so that's why i wrote 5 k cap now if i write if i am writing 5 k cap this means 0 i cap plus 0 j cap plus 0 5 cap 5 k cap so 1 into 0 gave me 0 Two into zero gave me zero, and three into five gave me fifteen. So answer was fifteen. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Now, class, this was still here. We were having electric flux independently. Now, one small concept and a question that will lead you to Gauss theorem. So just pay attention towards it, and we are discussing. Gauss theorem. See, a very small portion is there. See, uh, I think I have told you also. If you take a sphere and a very small portion we are taking, so when you are integrating it, when you are solving the answers like surface integral ds, right? If we solve ds over closed loop, remember, I think. I have told you, yes, yes, over closed loop. So when you are calculating this ds, no, just whatever is the surface area, write it as it is. For a sphere, what would you write the surface area? It would be four pi r square. Fine. If it's a cylinder, what will be the ds surface area that you will write? It will be two pi r. Whatever is the surface area, no, that you have been studying in mathematics. Exactly, that surface area will be. Slide over here. All right, ds is four pi r squared, and this is two pi r. This is the surface integral. Now, see, just pay attention to this question carefully. This is a very important question. It can come, and wherever you are having doubt, you all are free to stop me in between. All right, stop me, ask me, get your doubts clarified, or the way Thari does it, type your question in the chat column, and I'll answer it. See, the question says that. charge q is placed at the center of a sphere you have to calculate the flux through so what is given charge is given to the center of a sphere let me draw the sphere first and in between this plus q is given And the radius of this sphere is r. Fine. Till here, this is what is needed. Now, see electric field is going. This is the figure that is given to you. Fine, and this is the figure that you have to draw it. Please pay attention. Electric field is going like this in this direction, making an angle of ninety degree. And let's say I let me take the end cap also, area vector also. Now just pay attention. How will I calculate it? Where r is what? R is the radius of sphere. This r is the radius of sphere. Flux will be e dot ds. That is integral of electric field and ds. Why ds? Because I'm not sure about the surface here. No, a. If I if I just write e dot ds, e dot s. How will I figure it out? D is because it's a sphere given. Remember, I've told you in the last class when you were doing that for curved surfaces we take D S. That is integration because in curved surface you are having different values of electric field at different places, right? So if since different values of these surface areas are given, that's why we just use. And for uh, if you remember, I think let me just make you see it. You, are you people revising and or not like this? Remember, I have told you that at every point, electric field becomes perpendicular, mm -hmm. and we choose a small area, and then we drop a normal to it, and we take the integration of it over closed surface area. This is what we are studying right now. So see, so integration will be e d s cos zero degree because angle between electric field and area vector both are parallel to each other so angle will be zero degree now flux so flux will be simply e d s integral of e d s now electric field for a sphere yes 
humam can you tell me electric field for a point charge because electric field for a point charge in a sphere is same electric field we did know forces between two points we did electric field between two points for a point charge we had seen the formula of electric field this is a very basic thing humam can you try once austin tarif electric field for a point charge radius r is given charge is q what is the formula that we use for force we use f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square for two point charges right for Mr. electric k q by r square perfect k q by r square good so whether it's a point charge or it's a sphere that is given to you or i have made you write this point is well that for point charges and sphere only this is valid all right so this is going to be k q by r square very good d s surface integral just now i have told you you will just take the cell that we write and let me write it as 1 over 4 pi epsilon pi epsilon not r square this is electric field what is integral of ds that is 4 by r can we just put in the values see what will be flux electric field is q by 4 4 by what is flux electric flux is q by epsilon this is the answer to this question right class this was a question that was given its answer is this just connecting it with gauss theorem just understand gauss theorem the quantity which you have obtained right now no is not just a mere answer for this question it's actually the gauss theorem gauss theorem basically says that if you have a closed surface area randomly shaped closed surface area you are having whose charge is q so what will be the flux through it that is e integration of e dot ds what will it be it will always be the charge that is enclosed by the closed surface divided by epsilon not q by epsilon not we have done permittivity this is what is by gauss theorem what is meant by gauss theorem this is electric flux right this is electric flux electric flux will be charge enclosed divided by epsilon not this is charge enclosed divided by epsilon not this is the formula of gauss theorem so how do we write it according to gauss theorem electric flux will be under a closed surface 1 over epsilon not times the charge that is enclosed by the closed surface so if a question comes to you that state gauss theorem and prove gauss theorem prove that flux is q by epsilon not don't worry just write the statement and just the solution of this This, this is how you will prove Gauss theorem as well. We have already done Q by epsilon not is even possible. It's just because electric field is k q by r square and surface area is four by r square when everything gets. This is what is the statement of Gauss theorem. So I'm repeating. Whatever doubts you are having, please get it clarified because this is a very, very, very important topic. Most important topic of your electric charges and field. This entire lesson is Gauss. Theorem. We do it in the last because it is mentioned at the end of NCERT. But this is the most important topic. Whenever you are studying this lesson for your finals or in between for your unit tests anywhere. you can escape any other topic except for gauss theorem gauss law is very important so it says what according to gauss's law electric flux through a closed surface is 1 by epsilon not right 1 by permittivity 1 by epsilon not times 
the charge that it is how do we use it is validate the properties right now but just for the time being i hope this is clear what is gauss law and now you'll not be even surprised how phi is equal to q by epsilon not is even possible conditions you'll multiply you'll get this directly and in your question if in anywhere in your tests anywhere it comes to prove gauss theorem you will prove it like this if this question separately comes then you will solve it in this way but if, if proof comes this is the proof for it note it down wherever you are having doubt get it clarified class because this is a again i am repeating this topic is quite important so noted from here surface integral note down this question note down the statement then we'll discuss the properties of course there
written till here all of you done or not yes all right now let us see some properties of gauss theorem so first property that this is independent of shape and size if i give you a smaller sphere charge is q radius is r and if i give you a bigger sphere whose radius is 2r and charge is q both will be what is gauss law gauss law says that electric flux will be charge divided by epsilon not only so this will be q by here also this will be q by epsilon not here also it will be q by epsilon not did it depend on the shape or not? no it didn't or if i give you a cylindrical rod i say charge is q what will be the flux q by epsilon not or if even if i give you a very random shape with charge q so what will be flux q by epsilon not so flux is independent of shape and size it just depends on exactly whatever is the charge enclosed that's it and yes when i say it depends on charge enclosed means for example if i give you this case plus q1 is there minus q2 is there plus q3 is there q4 q5 so total charge will be q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 but what did i tell you in gauss theorem just consider all the charges that are enclosed within the closed surface so when we are calculating q and we'll only consider plus q1 minus q2 plus q3 and your flux will also be your flux will be q1 minus q2 plus q3 divided by epsilon not only only you will not be considering this and this whichever is outside second rule third is says that for signs so if you are having outward flux or inward flux so always remember if the flux is outwards this is going to be positive that is how will you write flux as plus q by epsilon it's just for the direction so that we are at least aware of what is the direction whether the charges and the electric fields are going outwards or inwards and for inwards we write it as negative that is flux is minus q by epsilon not this is what is the flux so outward flux inward flux fine third property next yes see if somehow this happens no class that electric field lines are just crossing the surface for example if i tell you uh this is this suppose this is a surface fine this is a surface electric field instead of going like this electric field lines are just crossing it like this you can see it is not touching it it is just crossing it passing through it like this it's just crossing it electric field lines these are just crossing the surface like this so if any electric field line is not on the surface perpendicularly to it so flux will automatically be zero what is the definition of flux flux says that for a, a, an electric field line to be counted under as electric flux we have to have the electric field line perpendicularly to the plane surface so either it should be perpendicular or to incline some angle that we can calculate if it is just crossing it field lines are just crossing it like this so in that case what will your flux will be flux will be nothing zero otherwise also if you take the area vector see electric field line is like this let's say crossing the surface drop area vector area vector will always be perpendicular so can you notice electric field and the area vector they are perpendicular to each other so if area vector and electric flux they are perpendicular to each other that will that way is also you will have theta is 90 and e s cos 90 degree that will also be zero so in any ways in both the ways by the definition or mathematically you are getting electric flux as zero right i'll repeat it either it is like electric field lines are crossing the surface area so if they are just crossing they are not passing through it or not penetrating through the surface and automatically flux is zero otherwise also if electric field is just parallel to the plane surface so perpendicular to it will be 90 degree so es cos 90 will be zero so you will have flux as zero and last properties if you have a dipole 
suppose you have a dipole plus q minus q so if we write charge enclosed it will be plus q minus q directly it will be zero so automatically for dipole also we have flux as zero why because see if charge enclosed is zero in this formula q enclosed divided by epsilon naught this will automatically be zero fine so plus q minus q so these are certain properties just note it down where whichever pro property you're not able to understand let me know if a question comes only on gauss law where you're just mentioning gauss law only theoretical part so what you can do you can mention the law you can mention the properties and you can mention its proof in the theory part if it comes all right note down the properties
now class one question this is a very easy question it's just that you have to understand the steps but class among this question no a lot of questions are asked from this part only so just pay attention to it it says that you have to calculate the flux through the cube second part says that you have to calculate flux through each phase see flux through the cube will be what i think this doesn't even need calculation the first part any one of you who could answer this flux through the cube just now you have studied if a charge is charge enclosed is q so flux will be yes class did you understand anything or not that we have been studying yes humamuddin charge enclosed is q flux will be what was gauss law austin can you try सिंपली charge enclosed divided by epsilon not fine charge enclosed divided by epsilon not that's it this was the flux q by epsilon not this is clear to all of you or not the first part flux is equal to q by epsilon not that was no the gauss theorem that we have been studying what was the statement of gauss law gauss law was mentioning this only no that if charge enclosed is q so flux that we calculate the way you were mentioning thari we calculated by e dot ds that is electric flux but if charge enclosed q is given directly you will divide charge by the permittivity that is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 that is what is flux this first part is it clear or not gauss law clear yeah. clear now so if this question comes no do not waste your time in solving see even if you write e dot ts you will get the same answer so instead of writing all of it just write it for phi is equal to q by epsilon not so this is electric flux q by epsilon not now second part says that so this is what this is flux through the entire cube no flux flux through a closed surface this is how we calculate flux through a closed surface so if flux is through a closed surface that is q we write flux as q by epsilon not second part says that flux through each phase what is the flux through each phase so how will we calculate flux through each phase see it's a very basic technique is there see for the second part what is the flux through the cube flux through the whole cube what is the flux through the whole cube just now we have seen in the first part flux through the cube that is q by epsilon not if i say flux through one cube how many faces are there in a cube how many faces are there in a cube six six faces right so it means one cube means six faces so this is like just see here mm -hmm. flux through if i write flux through the cube is q by epsilon not or if i write flux through six faces is q by epsilon not both will be having the same meaning because one cube or six faces means the same so flux through six faces this is also q by epsilon not what is the question asked flux through one phase so for six faces you are having this part so only for one you will divide it by six so flux through one phase will be q by 6 epsilon not this was for six faces so for one phase will be divided into six parts that is q by epsilon not divided by 
clear so flux through a single pace is r this is how you will solve it one more question is there that we'll see later on first note it down this part See, uh, one more question is there. This says that a charge Q is placed at a center of a hemisphere. Now you have to calculate the flux through it. So see, this is also very simple. In this question, what will happen? You are asked to calculate a hemisphere is there. And plus Q is there. See, hemisphere is not a closed surface, right? Hemisphere is an open surface. What is a closed surface? Closed surface is a sphere then only no charge q will be enclosed within the surface if i just half it 
only plus q will be remaining in the hemisphere part this will be now an open figure right so for a closed surface both the spheres have to be intact that gives plus q then only you no know, charge q will be intact within the sphere if i just remove the half this becomes an open figure hemisphere becomes an open so i have to close it so see if i just if i just add one more hemisphere somehow i just want to close it because i want to calculate the charge let's say i have added one more hemisphere now see if i have added one more hemisphere so on addition of one more hemisphere flux through the sphere this will be q by epsilon not if i am talking about sphere so one sphere means two hemispheres so it means flux through two hemispheres this is q by epsilon not so what is the question asking question is asking you to just write about one hemisphere so flux through one hemisphere is q by 2 epsilon not for the whole sphere it is q by epsilon not for each half of part it will become half of of it so q by 2 epsilon not q by 2 epsilon not when you will combine it you will get q by epsilon not once again this is how you solve for different trivial figures note this down
class, just note down this question. I think uh, this is a lengthy question. I won't be able to complete it. Five minutes are only left. So just make it, write the question and text me done once you have completed. Once you have written this question, no, just text done without even solving it. Just text me done. Because I'll discuss this on Wednesday only, the solution for this. And what about others uh, apart from Austin, Huma and Tari? Huma is also completed. And Tari, what about you writing? Yes, Tari. Just note down the questions for your homework. See, under electric flux, now you'll be able to solve this. So from this topic, Gauss law also you'll be able to do it. But okay, we'll practice some more questions of Gauss law that you'll do in the next class. From electric flux, question one, two, and three. These three questions. All right, from electric flux, level one, CBSE, these three questions. Question one, two, and three. All right.